Well, joining us from Los Angeles with more on the coronavirus outbreak is CBS News medical contributor, Dr. David Agus. David, good morning. Good morning. I have to start out with this. I, I've spoken to people who are either in a dead panic or who say simply that we, the media, are blowing this out of proportion. Which is it? You know, there's no question that most people in the United States, if they do get this virus, and a good portion will, will survive and will not get that sick. The problem is we have to protect the elderly and the people with other medical conditions because if it all happens at once, it will overwhelm our medical system and there will be thousands and thousands of deaths that we don't need. So we have to put in these you know, precautions and we have to be aggressive now so that it doesn't happen. Doctor, one of the things that's difficult here is how general the symptoms can be. So for all the people asking or wondering right now who are concerned, wh when is it time for someone, a friend, a, f a family acquaintance, anyone else to see the doctor? It's a great question, Jeff. I mean, anybody who has mild symptoms now should self-quarantine. That is, stay home and wait till the symptoms go away. And when you're a day free, you can go back out. And, you know, the problem is if we all went to the doctor now and we have any runny nose in the middle of flu season, we would overwhelm. And then you sit in the waiting room with 100 other people who are coughing. If you didn't have it going in, you will going out. So, you know, when you have symptoms that are serious or you're starting to really worry, then you should call your doctor and go to the medical system. But otherwise, try to self-quarantine. We've heard a lot about people that are more at risk, and the CDC issued some new guidelines for some of those. What have we seen as far as changes in that regard? Well, you know, yesterday the CDC said, hey, hey, listen, elderly people, do not leave your home as much as possible. You know, don't go out to places with large people, with large numbers of people getting together. And, you know, I think they're right. Um, I think we have to be cautious for people who are at risk. So if you are older, 6th, 7th, 8th generation, uh, 80s, you probably shouldn't get on planes. You shouldn't go into areas, you know, large uh, malls and large areas where people are congregating because it's too high a risk. You know, what we're seeing is that people who are younger have mild symptoms. And starting mid-50s, it starts to get worse and worse. And David, along those lines, for people that are washing hands and using antibacterial um, gels, is that actually working at this point? Do we know? The bottom line is we know so little about this virus. You know, the best way to fight a virus and to, to stop a pandemic from spreading is to have tests and to have knowledge. And our response was very delayed here. So washing the hands, critical soap or antibacterial uh, washes, um, you know, don't touch your face. All the things you're told can help. But if somebody coughs, or, 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 you know, there, there's particles in the air, and you cannot stop that by any measures. So many regards is be careful where you are and where you go, especially if you're high risk. We learned, David, last night that 900,000 tests have been shipped out, and there are more to come. Are we making enough progress on that front? No, we're not there yet. Um, you know, I, I'm hearing over and over again from medical centers across, and governors are calling me, saying we don't have the tests we need. So tests were shipped out, and realize that it's multiple tests per person. The initial test is two swabs, and then we repeat it many times, several times. So 900,000 tests doesn't equal 900,000 individual patients. We need it more in the country. We need the infrastructure to do the testing because it's not there also. You can ship a large number of tests, but unless you have people trained in equipment to do it, it's not going to be well implemented. You know, over the next several weeks, that'll happen. But it certainly is weeks late to stop the spread of this. There are going to be an enormous increase in the number of cases in the United States when we do more okay. testing. Doctor, beyond getting those testing kits out, this $8.3 billion spending bill that was signed by the president yesterday, how else should that money be used to fight coronavirus? Well, much of that money is used for future research, developing future vaccines, understanding the virus uh, better. But we need leadership and we need to develop new ways of doing testing. You know, in Korea, they do drive through testing. So you can imagine you don't feel well. You get in your car, you go. Somebody in a spacesuit swabs you, you go home. A couple hours later, you get called and told your result. In the United States, you go to an emergency room and you wait three and a half hours while everyone is coughing around you and you get your result. We need to develop infrastructure here in the United States to do things better. All right, Dr. David Agus, thank you.